What's up, Ava? Hi. What's up? How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Everything's all right. What? Doing good? Yep. Doing good. Staying as safe and productive as anyone can during this pandemic. So. Where, where are you? So I'm based in LA, but I've actually been back in San Diego since May, just because unfortunately, I'm sure as you both know, the cases in LA are just insane. So I'm lucky to be able to be back at home at my parents' house. Good, I love SD. I've got good friends down there. I love it. It's nice to oh. spend time with your mom and dad or your family. Yes, it is. And my cat, who might make a cameo, I tried to get her to move and she just won't. <laughs> you know, I'm That's an good. animal lover, so bring the kitty cat in. I love cats. Oh, she's wow. beautiful. That's so funny. This is Betty. She's a, she's a good girl. She's like my best friend. <laughs> I love that. I, my first pet was a cat. Really? Yeah, her name was Lucy Pussy. <laughs> That's adorable. Mm -hmm. That is so cute. I might have to steal that name for my next animal. <laughs> Are you guys ready to jump in? Woo! Absolutely. Okay, awesome. Well, I saw the movie yesterday and I loved it. And I thought a good way to do this interview would kind of have personalized questions and then questions that you can both chime in on. So Luis, I wanted to ask you, um, you actually mentioned in another interview that you've always been a fan of kind of these horror thriller genres, but you wanted to add an aspect of comedy. So how did you kind of decide that? that would be funny? <laughs> I love that the cat's tail slaps your face on, on the word comedy. <laughs> Perfect <laughs> um, timing. You know what? It's actually the femme fatale genre is the genre that I'm in love with. I'm actually a bit scared of horror movies. <laughs> um, you know, I've seen, I've, I've just seen so many femme fatale films. It's like a, a passion of mine. I even rewatched Basic Instinct and um, Fatal Attraction last night. Um, but I also, I, I also loved, you know, Barbara Sandwick in Double Indemnity and Gloria Swanson in uh, Sunset Boulevard and Jean Tierney in Leave Her to Heaven. That last one is my absolute favorite. Um, and um, I also loved American Psycho and I think Brett Easton Ellis is a genius. And I, I loved the opening of that film, you know, where he talks about, you know, how specific his morning routine is. And I started to think about that with, with like a female serial killer. And then I was like, well, why can't she be this really boss empowered girl who, you know, runs a hedge fund. And I wanted to take sort of the, the, the gender stereotypes and flip him. Yes. And I think you did such a great job in doing that. And I think what's cool is it's very obvious that you did your, a lot of research because there's so many underlying themes, like with you narrating about the psychological stuff that's going on. So I'm wondering for both of you, did a lot of research go into that, like kind of studying the psyche behind serial killers and for uh, kind of studying the psyche and the reasons behind um, robbery? <laughs> well, the, you know, no, is the answer. Are to you that. a dancer? Did you rob some homes in order no. to control and... I'm still here. I haven't taken it. I am a method actress. Naturally, there's like 200 bodies in my fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I had for lunch. Um, look, I think for my character, you know, uh, no, it wasn't so much that I researched a bunch of about, you know, what it is to be a thief or anything like that. But, you know, for me, this was just, a, he was the nicest guy in the world who, you know, all right, was a bit naughty, but, you know, ultimately this is a film about love, you know, and, and, and just never kind of giving up on that love. You know, he was, compelled and there was something quite old school in that pursuit of 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 of, of who he loved so um you know it was it, it just felt very like a, a true romance but in like a very kind of twisted context you know so in a, in a farcical anti yeah farcical. exactly and i love that you know it, this film does have innocence at its level mm -hmm. if you just get past all the murder yes hmm. it is innocent. <laughs> very innocent very innocent. I didn't do so much research on serial killers, but I did do a lot of research because, you know, Catherine is this very smart woman with very, like, you know, her monologues are very long and very articulate. And um, so I didn't know the first thing about hedge funds or, or the finance business. So I had to ask some pals who were in the business to help me craft that opening monologue, you know, um, and, you know, so there was a lot of research that went into, into, um, into, into that, I guess. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and now everyone knows about hedge funds. I'll leave it at that. So everybody knows very, about. Yeah, it's a, it's the GameStop moment. <laughs> yes, very very timely uh, release. And I'm wanted to ask as well. When was this filmed? We started on November first, twenty eighteen. We shot for seven days, and on the eighth day. The Woolsey fires ripped through Malibu and we were evacuated by the fire department and we could not go back to film until March. So that's so we filmed the rest of the movie in March of 2019 through to June, July. Um, and there was a few other pickups along the way. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's that's crazy. And, uh, you know, it's kind of, I guess, telling of what a lot of films are having to do now, um, you know, just it's good peace of mind knowing that you do have that option to pick up right where you left off. And I'm, I hope that uh, when you started filming again in March, it was just like old times, so. Oh, it, it was so nice. It was, yeah, it was good. And you know, that's, you got it, you know, you slip back into things, you know. Um, no, it was good. And luckily the house, can you believe, it was, only, was not damaged. Well, it was one of the only and The fires. Yeah had ravaged that area and so many people, you Lost know, and animals, and yeah, it's super horrible. tragic. Um, but this house. Because it's because it's steel and glass, it was one of the only homes, um, like in a fire ground yeah, radius. Yeah, which you can imagine burn, would have been. Burned down. And All that would have been the end of the movie because the movie, Louise basically had that I, house in mind when she was writing the movie. I wrote the film for that location. So, um, really? So we were really nervous for a while because, um, you know, they, they weren't allowing any helicopters yeah. to go over that region. So we didn't know what had happened to the house. Um, so m- my movie almost literally went up in flames. Um, but, you know, it was really lovely when we went back in March to see so much regrowth and the, and the land was healing and there was a lot of green. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, it was, a, it was a sad moment for us all because, you know, so many people you know, lost their homes. And it was just, the whole thing was really tragic. And actually we dedicated the movie to to all the, all the people that, that had been victims of, of that fire. Oh, that's amazing. And it is the type of thing, like that location truly was so integral to the film. I think with some films, if it's mostly outside, you find a, another patch of grass that looks identical. But with this, like the house is such a big motif within the with, uh, yeah, it's, so. it's, it's a character in the movie it really is and it's just it's so beautiful and I'm a big fan of that architect mm-hmm. yeah it was beautiful I'm like I need to find this house sometime <laughs> don't worry I won't go in there and steal anything I promise I'll look from <laughs> uh, admire from afar <laughs> it's um it's in North Malibu North Malibu okay I have a friend in maybe North Malibu. I don't know where it is, but somewhere in Malibu. It's just all around a gorgeous area. So great place to film. Um, And another thing I wanted to ask is, I don't want to like spoil the movie, but there are some points where you two kind of get into it and you have, you know, it's a very serious moment. Was there any, was there ever a time where one of you just started bursting out laughing, like lost it? All the time, all the time, (laughs) yeah. Me. Non-stop, like. Sometimes we would be in the middle of lines and like, it was honestly like, <laughs> I sometimes broke character because I was laughing so hard. I was just, yeah, at any moment. Even uh-huh. doing interviews with you today, I feel like I could just like <laughs> laugh, you know? We, we've, got a, we've, got a, we've, we've got good banter. We, have, we get along really well. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I love that. And um, correct me if I'm wrong, Louise, but you wrote this and then cast Ed or what was the process? I wrote it and then I cast Ed. Very cool. And Ed, how, what was your original reaction? Because uh, like you, is something different. You haven't really done something of this nature before, at least that I've seen you in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. Um, I read it and I was just like laughing and uh, shrieking and <laughs> just like super excited because it's something, as you say, I hadn't done anything like this and that's what gets me going, you know? So I wanted to meet the woman who, who, who'd written it and I met Louise and we just got on so well and she was so enthusiastic and charming and great. And who knew that Ed Westwick could be such a genius comic actor? I mean, he is the funniest guy. He's he's very funny in real life, but you're you're also a brilliant comedic actor. Like his timing is mm-hmm. on point. Thank <laughs> you. Um, so yeah, it was just a chance to like, I guess, sh- hopefully show people or, and show myself that I could do something that I hadn't really done. Yes, and you did a beautiful job, like Louis said, and I think um, it's important for 
actors to explore different types of roles. And I think that people who do see this um, are going to love it. And I know it is rated R, so maybe for some of the younger fans, maybe hold off or watch with a friend. Although it wasn't a typical movie that like I couldn't watch at night, so that was comforting because I'm like the. Oh, it's, 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 it's meant to be. I mean, it's meant to be a satire and a parody, and it's meant to be very lighthearted and very comedic. And I hope that when people you know, switch off the movie after they watch the end credits so they don't want to miss anything in the end credits. Yes, do not, because there's a whole other storyline, just say. <laughs> don't turn off the movie before the end credits. Anyway, um, I hope that people feel a warmth and a sentimentality because this is a love story. Mm -hmm. No, it is. And it was like, I sound like such a broken record, but like it really was done so beautifully. And I think it was cast perfectly as well. And what I think is cool um, is I've seen a lot of movies where there's only two main characters and then there's people on the peripherals, but they're not really involved. And you didn't have people like super involved, but I'm wondering if that was ever a fear, a fear of yours. Like can two characters only carry this entire movie? I never really thought about that. Um, I just, you know, it was, I don't know. I'm, I didn't really think about that. I just, I, I guess, you know, the the intensity of the dialogue. Mm. Mm. I suppose if you thought about that, then, then that would be one of the things that would probably stop me from making it. That's a bad idea. Well, I'm rubbish. So. I'm rubbish. Well, I know I don't believe in myself. And this guy's hopeless. So. <laughs> <laughs> what are we, why are we even doing this? Coming in. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go get lunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah, go get some lunch. Script. You want pizza? Yeah, yeah. But no, so I, I think, you know, at least if it was me, I would have gone, yeah, this isn't going to work. No. Uh, <laughs> but honestly, from an outsider who then became an insider, reading it and just <laughs> like a lot of that banter and everything like that, it really is energy, you know, and it keeps it going. And, and Louise did a great job at um, crafting a rhythm to this film, maintaining it and, and keeping you kind of right in there with these with these characters and you know I mean anyone who's been in a relationship just knows just the <laughs> insane stuff you get yourselves into sometimes <laughs> the arguments the 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 giggly stuff anything you know it's just like whoa it's a whirlwind you know what Ed actually came up with the movie title really yeah and he also came up with the great quote that it's that's at the very end of the film um when love is not madness it is not love no i didn't come up with the quote no you, <laughs> no, no no he didn't he i quoted, came up i found the guy who's quoted it well, okay no, Ped, pedro Qu yeah, pedro, yeah, pedro. pedro <laughs> 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 you, but, quote, anyway ed like after i met ed actually the the script got even better because i realized like we would find ourselves laughing about things or arguing over the pronunciation of something. And then we'd be like, hey, wait a minute, that's really funny. Like he calls yeah. a couch couch and I call couch a sofa. Sofa, like and, five minute fight. <laughs> and, yeah. and then like, I'm like, that's not a couch, it's a sofa. And then we ended up throwing that into the film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a bunch of stuff and then it came off like that. Um, yeah. It was, yeah, very cool. I yeah. Know. I don't know what was about. <laughs> Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> oh no, you answered. It was just about having two people. And I actually got a note that we have yeah. to wrap up. So really quickly, if uh, you want to recap your socials and then give like a call to action for everyone to check out the film. February 12th, available everywhere on demand. Amazon, Apple TV, Fandang, so Voodoo, Voodoo Verizon, Verizon, Xfinity. Everywhere. Go to meyoumadness.com. You can see the trailer, figure out all the places to watch it on there. Pre-order it, people, on your iTunes. We need all your support, and we hope you enjoy the movie. Yeah, have fun. Watch it. Perfect. I, lo I loved it. Everyone, make sure to watch it. Thank you both so much for your time. It was Thank so you. good to chat. Thank, Thank you, Ava. Seeing you. Bye. Bye. You too. Bye. Let's go.